Welcome back to Biostat Squid. In this video, we will cover how to interpret p-values. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Okay, you are a biostatistician who has embarked on a trip to solve a question that has puzzled humanity for centuries. Are female squid bigger or smaller in size than male squid? Ideally, we would get data from all squid in the world, or whichever species we are studying, but we cannot do that. So we need to take a sample from that population and make inferences from that sample that we assume will apply to the whole population. You collect some samples, and the means of these two samples are different. At this point, there are two possibilities. The samples really have different means, or the other possibility is that the difference that is observed is a coincidence of random sampling. So just by chance, you fished the smallest female squids in the population and the largest male squids. However, there is no way to confirm any of these possibilities. As you very well know as a biostatistician, all you can do is calculate the probability of observing a difference between sample means in an experiment of the studied sample size if in fact there are no differences at all between the size of female and male squid. Essentially, we calculate the probability of getting the result we got, the difference in means, if there is no difference at all. This probability is the p-value, and like all probabilities, it goes from 0 to 1. If the p-value is small, then the difference is quite unlikely to be caused by random sampling, or in other words, the difference between the two samples is real. If the p-value is big, then you cannot discard the fact that your findings may have been caused by random sampling, so you cannot conclude whether there is a difference or not based on the sample you have. There might be a difference, but you just cannot conclude whether there is a difference or not with your sample. But how do you decide what is a small or a big p-value? You should decide the threshold in advance. In other words, at which smallest accepted value of p the difference will be considered a real difference. We will talk about that in just a minute. P-values can be used to assess differences or relationships between variables in a sample. Differences, for example, the difference in size between males and females in a squid population, and relationships, for example, the relationship between size and the maximum depth squids dive to. In either case, the p-value tells us the probability that the observed result occurred by pure chance. So a linear positive relationship between size and maximum depth and a difference in means of one meter were just coincidences because of the samples we took. But in reality, there is no relationship between size and maximum depth and there is no difference in means, for example. In simple terms, p-values inform us about how true or reliable, how representative of the population the result is. We can also look at this from a different angle. The p-value represents the probability of error, the risk we're taking when accepting our observed result as valid or representative of the population. With a p-value of 0 0.05, there's a 5% chance that in our experiment, um, our squid expedition, we were really unlucky and fished big male squids and small female squids. 5% probability that the difference in means found in our sample is a fluke. In other words, assuming that there is actually no difference in the average size of squid, so male and female populations are actually identical in size, if we repeated the same experiment 20 times, so if we did 20 boat trips, we would expect one experiment to reveal an equal or stronger difference in means than the one we got. 
In research, we usually use a p-value cutoff of 0.05 or 0.01, depending on how stringent we want to be. The p-value basically sets the error we are willing to accept when making assumptions based on a sample. That is why we often see that the results with a p-value lower than 0.05 are considered statistically significant. In conclusion, since we can't study the entire population of squid and get uh, the real value of the difference in means of sizes between males and females, we make an estimate based on sampling. And since this is only a sample, we then calculate the probability that that estimate is actually representative of the population we're studying. So that is it for today. Squid-tastic. Hope you liked this video. Let me know if anything wasn't clear or if you'd like part two on confidence intervals. I will also leave the link of a few additional resources which explain p-values and confidence intervals really nicely. Otherwise, have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.